get a feeling now it's time for Christmas and Christmas is my favorite time of year it's beginning to look like all my wishes are coming true that's why I cheer I've been busy decking the halls I've been kind to big and small And now it's time to have a merry holiday What a feeling when it's time for Christmas Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here I guess that spring and summer, they're all fine but I've been waiting for the season that's mine So let it come Yeah, let it come Hi guys, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today I'm gonna share royal icing cookies with you guys. This is a big deal for me because this is something that is, I think, three generations passed down in my family, and each generation we have kind of improved upon it. And I've also seen a lot of royal icing stuff out there, kind of on Pinterest or even on YouTube, that um, is made by someone who is a pastry chef or maybe classically trained. And I wanna show you guys my method because it's very, I guess, rudimentary. It's an at-home method that we have worked on and it's just simple. We're just gonna use spoons and bowls and stuff like that to make some really, really beautiful cookies and something that I'm really proud of every year. So I'm just really happy and excited to be able to share this with you and share something that is an extremely um, important tradition that is close to my heart and near and dear to our family and I will be doing along with my son too, which is also very special. So I'm excited to share and I'm hoping that I can share some techniques that you can use at home that are approachable so that you can make beautiful cookies for your family and maybe start a tradition of your own. So let's go on this journey together. So these cookies start with sand tarts. Now this is my favoritest, favoritest cookbook. Is that a word, favoritest? The joy of cooking, it is the best. And in this, you have a recipe for sand tarts. The reason I like to use these cookies is because the, the sides of them when you use cookie cutters are so crisp and clean and it's absolutely perfect for using the royal icing with. So there's a reason why we're not using a traditional sugar cookie and using these sand tarts instead. They're also amazing because they have a little bit of grated lemon zest in them and they have this lemony flavor, so they really are just fantastic. We're gonna start by sifting three cups of flour with a half a teaspoon of salt. And then in my mixer here, I'll be using one and a half sticks of butter and one and a quarter cups of sifted sugar. Then we're gonna beat in one large egg, a large egg yolk, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a teaspoon of lemon zest. Now, at this point, it's gonna start getting into kind of like a harder ball, and we're gonna to need to basically knead it by hand until it gets into, again, a, a ball. And then we're gonna put it into quarters, and we're gonna chill it for several hours. So the important thing about this is you're definitely gonna to have to get started on your cookies ahead of time. I've done this the night before before and let it sit overnight. As long as it's well wrapped, it will be just fine. Kids in the background, it's real life here, guys. So, and then we'll get back to it. So I'm actually gonna let it sit. It's a Sunday, I'm gonna let it sit for several hours and we'll come back to it and um, roll out our dough and get our cookies baking. Got my 
So it might be the next day here. I was a little over ambitious initially, but it's time to roll out our dough. So you just want to put some flour onto a flat surface. I do have this uh, baking mat that I absolutely love and I'll link one below for you guys if you want to get one, but you can just use any sort of um, mat that you have or you can even just use your counter when the dough comes out of the fridge it is really hard at first because it's very very cold that's a lot of uh, butter in it but you just need to work it just push it down and roll it out i like using this french rolling pin and make sure to use as much flour as you need and you want to roll it to about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick so these are going to be pretty thin cookies and then I'm just putting a little bit of flour on my cookie cutter and then cooking it out, cutting it out. You can see kind of how thick the dough is there. It's really important that your dough is the same height the whole way through because this will affect cooking. So if you have some that are very thin and then some that are thicker, you'll have some that end up burnt and others that don't. So you just wanna make sure that it's consistent the whole way through. And that's why I like that French rolling pin because I feel like I have a lot of control there. And then I like to use my largest cookie cutters first. So I'm using those big snowflake cookie cutters because they take up the most space. And then from there, I fill in with the smaller cookie cutters because what's gonna happen is once we cut everything out of this piece of dough, we're gonna roll it back up and put it back in the fridge and then grab another piece of dough and then keep rolling it out. But eventually you end up with like a tiny piece of dough. And so you're gonna have a lot more smaller pieces or smaller cookies than larger ones. And that's why you wanna start, start big guys. Do not fear, start big. So here I'm just pushing everything together and I'm just gonna put this back in the fridge in the meantime while I roll out another piece of dough and bake my cookies. Each cookie sheet is gonna bake in the oven at 400 degrees for about seven to nine minutes. And my oven cooks hot, so if your oven cooks hot, I actually cook them for like five minutes because they're pretty thin cookies and they cook up really, really quick. All right, so now that we've made our cookies and they are ready for us to frost, very exciting. I, in my favoriteest joy of cooking here, I also keep my Wilton Royal Icing recipe. So here is the key to your Royal Icing. Let's find it. Royal Icing. This is the recipe you wanna use if you buy meringue powder. So I use royal icing, I buy meringue powder. I will also leave a recipe down below. You can use egg whites to make royal icing. And there's also a recipe for it, I think, in the joy of cooking. But I like to use the meringue powder. One thing, just, you know, it's not egg whites. So it lasts longer, it's safer. And uh, I just find that it's a lot easier. That's personal opinion. Like it's a lot cheaper probably to um, buy eggs and just use egg whites. Very, very inexpensive in that case. In this case, you do wanna buy the meringue powder, which also isn't too expensive and it lasts a really long time. I mean, we're gonna use three tablespoons here and you get like an entire tub of it. And you can find that at any craft store or you can order it on Amazon and I will link that below for you if you want to get some for yourself so you can make these because we're gonna go with a super easy, easy method on these. I've seen some YouTube videos where they're like, oh, they're gonna pipe it in the bag. And I definitely wanna try that stuff, but I just have a very easy and simple method that we have used for years. My my mom started doing it, I guess my grandmother really started it, my mom does it, and then we've you know, developed it over time to the point where it's just, you don't need any fancy stuff to make it, right? <laughs> you don't need like a piping bag and whatnot, I mean, I guess you could just use a little bag, but I'm rambling. Either way, here's our royal icing. So three tablespoons of um, meringue powder and one pound of confectioner sugar and six tablespoons of warm water and this is where things get a little interesting i'm probably going to add a little bit more water see how it's looking for um, stiff peaks at this point i am going to add more water because i don't want my icing to be extremely stiff in it i actually want it to be somewhat runny uh, just not too runny so we'll, we'll get to the right consistency and i'll show you what that what that looks like
frosting here this is much thicker than we're gonna need but what's gonna happen is once we add our food coloring it's, it's gonna turn colors it's gonna turn colors but it's also gonna thin out so because it's gonna thin out I would don't want to add water now and make it the consistency that it should be because if I add this then it's gonna be too thin so I will just add some of the frosting to each bowl It does. Hmm. And then that spoon is for taking the frosting out and then the scoops them on your cookie. Mm -hmm. But there should be spooning one of each. Right. Then it would mix the colors. Right, mommy? Right. So <coughs> I'm also going to give you your own little bowls. There's also a way you can spread. You would just have to use the back of your spoon. I know. So this is for Tommy. And isn't JJ just gonna have one bowl? JJ is busy. He's not gonna be here. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of food coloring. You can kind of not go wrong adding too much red. Red turns out a little pink, and you may have to add more. So let's see. Where we end up with this? It turns out red. It does, but if you see, if you keep mixing it, it does end up turning a little bit pink. So don't keep mixing. Now there are fancy food colorings that uh, you know have a lot of dye, but we go with the dollar store kind because that's what we have. And that looks like a sweet red. I feel like you could very easily spend a lot of money making cookies and. I feel like it's already expensive because butter is expensive and then you start buying all the little this and that's and it just adds up so I'm sticking with Dollar Tree I think it works just fine this is plenty red for me what do you think Tommy look good yeah looks good all right so we'll add first color I have. Ooh, add some to your bowl now I would say this looks a little thick, so we'll add a little extra water to some of your bowls. Yes. And for mommy too, I think this is a little thick, so we'll add some water at the end. Also, no fancy piping bags, guys, just using spoons. Right, Dombo? Again, quite a bit, probably about a teaspoon. And that deep forest green. It's not going to be deep, but it always looks so good at the beginning. When you mix it up and you're like, this is like baby green, like mint. Although I do love using like a mint color. They're just so pretty. I don't like mint. Oh no? Like the flavor? Yeah. Do you think we should make this a little bit greener, Tommy, or do you think it's green enough? I think it's green. Oh, okay. Tommy says it's green enough, so we will stick with it for now. I'm going to make my Christmas tree green, my two snowflakes blue, and my star... Tommy. I wish I should make my star yellow. Oh, yeah. no. He said we don't use them. No, we're not going to do yellow. We can make it blue. I'm going to make it green, and then I'm going to make my candy cane white and red too. Right, you're going for the very traditional aesthetic. You're not going to mix anything up, I see. So I'm going to need all three spoons. Uh, I'm going to need three spoons. Is that going to be... Four, right? No, three. Great, count again. colors and white. Oh yeah, white. I need have white too, right? These I said I wanted white. I forgot that I only have a blue I thought I was gonna have like 
we're just gonna add, oh my goodness, like a quarter of a tablespoon, not even to this. Because you can always, you know, add more water. It's a little bit more difficult to thicken it up. It's not that bad, like you can just add some uh, powdered sugar, but you really want it to be the right, right consistency from the beginning if you can. So that is pretty much right. Like that looks good to me. Sometimes you have to play around with this and you'll make a first cookie and you'll be like, wow, that doesn't seem right. Like it's not, it's too thick or it's too runny and it's running off the edge. You definitely don't want it like that either. Like I said, if you have to, you can adjust and add a little bit more powdered sugar just to thicken it up. The reason that the meringue powder and the powdered sugar work together, they're what makes it hard. So if you didn't add enough powdered sugar, which I've made this before and been like, oh, that looks like enough powdered sugar. Like it can't need more, it tastes fine. It Meringue is basically, you know, if you look like a lemon meringue pie, it is like that egg white part and it makes marshmallows. So I made the most beautiful cookies one time and they just had this marshmallow topping that did not harden and dry. And it was uh, not ideal, <laughs> not ideal at all. So do always, 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 always add your, the right amount of confectioner sugar. Don't be scared. So normally I would leave this in here, but so that I can have a better aesthetic. We'll pour this out because you can really just leave the white in the bowl. It's fine. See this white is still a little bit thick for my taste. This is gonna be plenty, plenty, plenty of frosting, so I'm not too worried about scraping out the Mama, bottom. Mama, you're gonna use the bigger bowls, Mommy, right? Yep, the big gal gets to use the big bowls. If he is something that means it's, it's not yucky. It's not yucky? No, that is yucky. What's yucky? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> icky stuff is like stuff that's yucky. Open for the best. Okay. My colors. And if you make it right, it's gonna start getting like, you see how it's kind of hardening right, right away? That's a good thing. That means that this is gonna crisp up nicely for us. I don't know if you want your cookie frosting to crisp up, but this frosting should dry and be hard. Like basically you can make these cookies and you can put them in a tin with other cookies or you can put them in a bag or something like that. And the frosting's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay, like it's gonna be a hard, like to the touch frosting. But delicious, like not crunchy or anything like that. It's very, very good. So I'm gonna show you all my different cookie methods now. We'll start off by doing our uh, snowflake, our big snowflake. This is one of my favorites. So now we're also gonna need toothpicks or I actually like to use these skewers just because I feel like I have a lot of control over them, kind of like a pencil. So these are gonna be an important part of our process as well. So I'll start my snowflake by making a white one. And when you put your frosting on, you kind of just want to start in the middle here and work your way out. Now this feels a little thick to me, I can already tell. So we will see, but you don't want to go, you know, completely to the edges of your cookie. This does take a little practice, and that's why, I mean, some people use like that fill method where they, I don't know if you've ever seen cookies like this before or watch videos on it, but they'll do an outline of the cookie with like a thicker frosting, and then they will do a, um, what's a, what's in, a more thinned out frosting and use a piping bag to pipe that into the, into the outline, and then it will fill it up. Now, I guess this is maybe a little more precise, but it's also, for me, like, I don't really want to, I don't really care that much about <laughs> putting together multiple types of frosting and, and piping bags. This is already, as far as I'm concerned, a pretty involved cookie baking method, and I think the way that they come out is good enough for me. So, that is that. But I will, I'll, I watched another video that I thought was pretty good on how to do it. Um, and I will link that below for you if you're interested in, in using, you know, the combination of these methods and using what I'm doing here. But if you're like, I can't do that by hand, 
I need to use piping bags and make the multiple frostings because you were just extra like that, then by all means. So now our frosting is on our snowflake and I think that looks pretty good. I guess there's a little part right here. You just wipe that off, whatever you think. And we have our blue. Now, as I'm looking at this blue, I'm like, this is thicker. Probably a little thicker than I want, is my guess. But let's try it out. The first cookie is always a crapshoot. You never really know. So I'm just gonna put dots on every single one of these guys. Very scientific. And am I gonna do anything else? I don't think so. And so there's two ways you can do this. You could drag this through from the middle and make it go out, which is really cool, or you can drag it into the middle. So, you know what I am? I'm gonna put a dot in the middle here. Ta -da. Yeah. And see, it doesn't have to be perfect, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this inward and we're gonna just end up right there and stop right there. I can tell my frosting is a little thick, it's drying fast, which is fine. But I'm probably gonna add a little water. And so you just wanna come from the outside in here. It's actually really cool because once you get started on it, your thing gets a little bit of blue on it and you can see that it comes in from the outside with the blue. So I'm actually gonna go over this one one more time just to add a little blue. I don't even have to go all the way through. So that is our first cookie. Okay, great. Just making sure that I'm, I have good, good lighting here. So that is one method. You just put the little circles and you go from the outside in and it makes, they're almost like, they're almost like little hearts. I don't wanna put too much to the side because I don't want the frosting to go off to the side. It's not dry yet. This will probably dry in, I would say about five hours, but I'll check back with you guys at that time and we'll see, it, it may take longer. I usually like to do them actually late at night. It's kind of my personal little like, okay, we'll do this late at night and then we will, uh, in the morning they'll be dry. So how long it actually takes, not exactly sure. It is a little messy of a process, so we'll clean up. We will stick with the snowflake right now and I'm gonna show you another method that we can do with the snowflakes. These are my these are pretty much my favorite uh, cookie cutter. And I will, I'm gonna try and find one for you guys to link below. I wanna say I got it at Michael's, but I can't be too sure. All right, so I have my frosting on my cookie. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing I just did. So we're gonna put dots here, oops. And if this is too precise for you with the spoon, you could absolutely go ahead I'll show you, and do this with your you could absolutely go ahead and do this with your toothpick. I just think, I don't know, it takes me a little bit longer to do it that way. I'm I'm more seasoned with the spoon. One more red, Mommy. Tommy, it's so amazing. And then I'll just have to do the mystery and I'll be done. That's incredible. All right, so the last time we went from the outside in, this time we're gonna go from the inside out. So we're just gonna drag it this way. Oops. So that's what this one looks like. Yeah, and there was a little bit that kind of cut open here. All you have to do is just take your your thing and kind of fill it in. And then I see that I have a little bit extra, so I actually just take the back of this and pull that away. So that should be fine. So here's the first one that we did, and here's the second one we did. There, you can see they're not you know, dramatically different, but they're a little bit different. Your hearts, basically, I would say that the end of these, these are almost like hearts, and they just go different ways. So I like both of them. I think I like the first method best, just from a visual perspective, but both are really cute and both work out really well. Oh, 
Oh, this is a fun one. So these are the stars that I cut out and then, I, or sorry, I think they're snowflakes, but snowflake that I cut out and there's a snowflake in the inside. So this one's very, very fun. Now you can do any combination of colors on these. I'm again going to use my white just because I like that white. Mommy, one's already done drying. Look at it. Almost, almost, but they are, they're drying pretty fast today, which is a good thing. Yes, and I can have one for dessert. Well, yeah, I thought these would be nice to put out after we do our Christmas tree decorating. Yeah. Wait, after our Christmas tree decorating, we can have one of these? Probably. Just one, though, because they're sugary. <laughs> I'm going to take, I'm going to take the really big one I made, which is the snowflake. That's your favorite, right? I do. I love, I just like the shape of the snowflake. I know. It's also my favorite one to decorate. By the way, Marie, that snowflake's like That means that the sprinkles will stick. Yeah, so that's good. All right, so this one I'm gonna start putting like a little line here. Again, now and that I'm doing this, the one. Oops. To stick. oh well. You just take your things happen, guys. <laughs> I may have experience doing this, so I'm doing this like this. If you wanted to use a piping thing, go for it. Put all my cookies on here now. But I do just love the control that the spoon gives me. And I just want to fill in these lines because I have a way that I'm going to play around with this one. It's hard, you have to remember year after year all the different techniques because I'm not a pastry chef. I haven't done these like for, I feel like oh, I do these for every right, occasion. I don't dump, I forgot, I don't dump. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put a line through to this side, and then every little peak here, I'm gonna put a line in. I'm just gonna drag my frosting in, and then on the opposite side, I'm gonna pull all of these ones out right at the corners. I think that's enough sprinkles for that. So it just gives it this kind of like star-like look. I'm just surprised though. I feel like my white frosting is just drying so, so, so fast. But that, that look. These ones are super cute. I don't think we're gonna do anything too crazy with these. They make Santa Clauses. So here is what we do to make a Santa Claus. We put his beard on. Tommy's watching me very intently right now. Like, mommy's making a Santa Claus? How is she doing that? You wanna know how I'm doing that, Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> is that his beard? Sure is. And then we might go a little bit bigger on the beard after, we'll see. I'm just gonna put it put on my hat to see where that lays out. But yeah, it's cool. Like you can make a Santa Claus out of a heart. 
And these are usually what we would leave for Santa when he comes. Right, Tommy? Oh, so we make his Santa Claus cookie from Santa Claus. You think that's funny? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of white. That's what I get get for adding extra white or extra water to the white. Now it's like kind of how, more how I want it, but I'm used to working with it thicker. So going everywhere. But you see our little Santa? He looks good, huh? And so my cookies are done. Oh my candy cane, I run down the sprinkles. Can you give me a more mommy? You need more sprinkles? Yeah these look at it. twinkle in his eye. So here's Santi. And I actually have these, which I'm considering using. These are like little cinnamon. I'm like, should I make his nose? I don't know. I kind of like it how it is, so I'm not going to mess with it. Sometimes it'll go with your gut go too crazy on stuff. If you feel like it's enough and it's done, leave it. Leave it alone. So yeah, that's our Santa Claus cookie. And that's not so crazy and fancy, but it's so cute. Meanwhile, let's see what Tommy's up to. Oh, I was going to show your cookies off on the video. Okay, say bye. Bye. You did a pretty good job. As we go here, we can just add water. I like to keep it off to the side, and that way if you feel like you're like, getting worse. Yeah, I'm gonna wait here to see, we'll see when they're done, when, when the rest of them draw. Because this one's already dry, right? Well, kind of. Remember, you said it wasn't quite. Yeah, well, they'll get a little sticky. Even though it feels like the top's dry, it takes a while. So, I mean, it's literally gonna take hours, Tommy. It's not gonna be dry. Yeah. So, if I were you, I would just go play for a little while. No, but I'm like, I don't, I just like, I'm just going to look at them. It's like, they look so beautiful, but I just want to look <laughs> at them the whole time. Okay. So I like doing these little snowflakes as well. They, a lot of times you can buy like snowflake packages. That, by the way, mommy, these are the little snowflakes. have snowflake sprinkles. That's cool. Too. I know they're right here. Yeah. So I like to do the snowflakes really pretty much white and blue, but you can use whatever colors you want. So I'm gonna use the same pretty much the same technique here on this little guy. Oh I remember what I like to do. Never mind. I have a plan. So we're actually gonna do circles. You can start to tell when it's gonna like drop like a big piece. And these are not, they don't have to be perfect because you're, you gotta remember like you're gonna. Mommy, where are we gonna put this cookie when it drives? Mommy, what are we gonna do with this cookie when it drives? Because it's, well, this cookie's gonna always be beautiful cookie. So you can be, you can be more fancy about this or you can be like me and just try and put it on mommy, and then pull mommy, it off. Mommy, mommy, this Fine. cookie's very beautiful. I'm not selling these. Mommy, this cookie looks. Still very beautiful, so I'm gonna decorate this one. Okay, that's fine. It looks like a beautiful cookie. So when you have the lines so like I'm just this, gonna have to mix these two up together. Absolutely. So when you have the lines like this, you can just go out like this. You could go back and forth too. I do find these kind of look like spidery or something. I don't know. And then on each of the sides here, you can actually pull it in and it looks kind of like a flower. And this is my favorite, favorite way to make a little beautiful flower in the middle. 
of your cookie. And I just think that that's absolutely gorgeous. So don't forget to pull the lines in on the side because if you do this and you just do the outside, you're like, okay, that looks like a spider web. Okay, well, you're not done. And then anytime that's kind of like pulling apart, go ahead and just stick your toothpick right in there and it will, it will flood right back together. So I'm gonna do a red star now. Do another method. They all start the same though, except for Santa. Start off by filling your cookie with whatever color you want to be your base. And I'm going very traditional today, but you sure don't have to. Mommy, I'm gonna need a napkin. I might. I just got an amazing idea. What if I had like neon food coloring and I did neon cookies? Because the cool thing about these is you don't have to do these just for Christmas. You can do anything with these. So now I'm just going to put lines um, yeah. going from the center of my cookie okay. out. Again, you don't feel comfortable using your spoon for this. Go ahead and use your toothpick. It might take a little bit longer because the, the lines will be thinner. But it should work. So we're going to make a spinny star. So you're just going to make a circle around like this and then you're going to go the opposite way. And then you're going to go the opposite way. So just keep doing this all the way around the star, switching directions when you get to the other side. And this is super fun because I think it kind of looks like a candy like a little bit of a peppermint candy but it's a beautiful star by the way food coloring does mix to a different color kind of really well so the same method i just used in the star you could absolutely use on these snowflakes as well so i think that that's really really fun to do on the snowflakes too so now we're going to do a christmas tree it does make a different color but it's making some more color here so we're gonna do I mean not that it's shocking see how fast that's drying it's crazy so just gonna add a little tiny bit of water to our green it's still thick it seems thick let's try it So it's up to you whether you want to do the stump of your tree. I kind of like to leave mine. To pretend it's like a, you know, that's the wood. And then we're going to use our white and zigzag back and forth. So I'm just going to pour a ribbon onto this tree. And we want to go back and forth and back and forth. And I feel like I'm starting to thick there. So I'm actually gonna pull that off and then start again right here because you do not want your ribbon to get too thick. I'll be honest with you guys, I just made one where my ribbon was too thick and it didn't look, didn't look great. So I cut that out, but mistakes happen. And so you just wanna start at the bottom of your tree and pull this right up. see how that looks and then I'm just going to go back through here and make sure that everything is tied together by kind of squiggling it. So maybe I might have gone too deep. That is what it's supposed to look like. That's great. So then I bought these cute little stars at Walmart. I love getting like individual little sprinkles that I know exactly what I'm going to do with. So in this case, I know these stars are going at the top of my trees. So I just love how that turned out. I'll show you. That's the one that I messed up. It's still okay. Okay, so we'll make another tree. There are other methods you can do with trees. Like you can, obviously I could put these on there and just have little berries. That would be adorable. And then I didn't have any cookie cutter wreaths for some reason. I just bought one, but I had already made my cookies this year. But wreaths are amazing for doing this method of icing your cookies as well because they just are like this perfect circle. 
and they look adorable. So growing up, we always did wreaths, and for some reason, I just haven't had one in years, which has been a sad, sad state of affairs. But hey, I have one now, so next year, or if later in the season I make cookies, I will be making wreaths. So here, I'm just gonna add some little circles to my tree. You definitely wanna make sure there's like enough, like that they're thick enough. Oopsie, I got Not too a thick, but table. that's okay though. That's okay, sweetie, you're doing a nice job. I said that's okay though. And so we're gonna make our own little stars on here. And you just want to pull this from the inside out on each one of these white stars, white dots. You know, this isn't the fanciest cookie I make, but I do like it. It's very classic. You know, it kind of depends on what you're going with too. If you're gonna even make, you could make like a themed tray of cookies and you could do all Christmas trees or maybe you only have Christmas tree cookie cutters. So you may need lots of methods. You can do this, you could do this on a star as well and I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys that too. Now that I'm on a roll, I'm gonna keep making a million cookies. I don't know who's gonna eat these all. We're gonna decorate our tree and we'll have them at our tree decorating, but there's only four of us, so. Oh well. We'll just save them. We'll just save them for the desserts for different night groups. Great idea, buddy. So, candy canes. Oh, I love doing these too. These are so fun. Okay. So, starting off by doing white. I was just showing Tommy this. When you make a candy cane, start by doing white. That's the easiest method. It's also cool. I mean, it's cool when you start with red, too. You can do that. I find it's easiest to start with white. And then we have our red. Is, does my red need more water? I think so. It's a little thick. Well, these hands are pretty messy. Yeah, that's why you're going to have to wash them. Fix every color into one color. It's going to be weird. Hmm. So there's two ways you can do your candy canes that looks really cool and I'm going to start by doing just a line down my candy cane. Yoink. Find one of these that I used red in. So I'm just going to go up and down and up and down up and down up and down and I think that this looks pretty cool I like this so these are the stacking trays that I think are very cool for like when you're taking things out of the oven and then these little ones that I use here I don't know if, can you guys see them yeah you can see them over here these are Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree has great trays too. So you don't need the stacking trays. I do, I like them because I do a lot of baking, but the Dollar Tree trays is what I had for years. I just got these stacking trays this year. And these Dollar Tree trays have done, treated me very well. They do get like a little rusty after a while. So you have to replace, but they're a buck. So whatever. All right, I will show you guys the inverted of this and a different option for doing your candy canes. So we will start with red. And then the last one we did a line like this, and this one we're gonna do uh, lines all the way down it. So it's gonna look initially kind of like a regular candy cane, right? We need another one in here. I just love doing these because they're just, they're not an exact science. I know some people treat them like they are but you don't have to because it's just for fun and these toothpick method of kind of dragging things through is very forgiving. 
And I like forgiving. I like forgiving clothes, outfits. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way down like that, and then we're gonna go all the way back up like this. And then one more time, we're gonna go all, all the way down. So I really like this one. This is one of my favorite methods too, if you're doing a wreath. So if you're doing a circular one, same thing, do all the lines on the outside and then do this inverted method and it looks just like this most gorgeous wreath. So that is a really cool candy cane. I kind of like it better than the other one actually, to be honest. And we're gonna do the little guys now. So I make a lot of little cookies that I think are very, very fun. So I just love doing these little ones because they look so cute on a cookie plate and they stretch your dough further and they don't take much time to make. So we're gonna do a stocking to start and the cool thing about these two is this stocking, it's a little bit cracked and whatever, but you won't know because we're just gonna put frosting over it. So I'm making a traditional looking stocking, some white on the top. So here you can stop, but I'm gonna add. Now, um, for you, look at on your. That's it. Look how. I know. Go, go clean them. Go wash them in the sink. Okay. You have, you have a step stool, and you can wash them, or you can go upstairs and use the leaf thing to wash them. So we're just gonna do one line of green right here. So here, I'm just gonna start at the top and pull this through. And I'm gonna pull it all the way down, three times through. And that's what our little stocking looks like. And again, I'm gonna go through, just tie that together. So I think that's pretty cute. You could just use red and white, like I said, however you wanna do that. I have a little Christmas tree. You can sell that we're, I mean, I could make a lot more cookies. Um, I'm gonna be pretty done, done here pretty soon. And this makes uh, plenty, 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 plenty of icing. The amount that you would make by using this recipe. So you don't have to worry about ever having to make more. I've never, ever, ever run out of icing. I've always needed to throw it away, unfortunately. But it's amazing because I mean it's very obviously very inexpensive. And so here I'm just gonna do a few lines through this tree. Like this. And on the diagonal. And you have a choice here, you could do, you know, green through this too. I think I'm gonna just leave it red. And again, we have barely any cookies that have all, all three colors on them, so never mind. Just kind of drag it through too. Yoink. And this white is kind of going crazy on this cookie. So let me use my little method here. Just kind of scrape it off. And so I am just gonna pull this through from the top down. So I am, in this case, not going to put, like go back and forth or anything. I'm just pulling it all down. And because I love my little stars, we'll put the star at the top here. This is the first year I've gotten stars and like, why? How does it take me that long? Kind of a, kind of a no brainer. Okay, so these are so cute because these are the insides of these guys right here and I think they look like a poinsettia. So I'm gonna do red and white. And I just think that they turn out so cute. Nice. Alright so pop quiz do we remember how to do the little poinsettia? Dot in the middle and then circle. That, that will make our poinsettia. We're 
go out, 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 out. And then we're gonna say, yikes, that looks like a spider web. And then we're gonna go in. And now we have a beautiful poinsettia. Can we an applause? These are super cute as well, and I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna use my blue. I haven't touched in a while. You can tell it's starting to harden up. We have water. I love these little guys. These little snowflakes. I don't know what package they came in. I think it, I think I got another package of little little quincy cutters this year at. I want to say Target. If I can find a link for you guys, I will. Mommy, it seems like all of them are starting to dry except the one that's really brown because I used some water frosting on it. Yeah, it'll take time because you just did that one. And so this one, instead of doing circles, we're going to do lines. Like this. But some of these are already starting. All of them are starting to get drawn already. Right? You can actually go all the way across them. They're just starting. Even better. Perfect. And then we're going to do circles. So, around like this, around like this, around like this. I'm going to show and I just think that's I'm also gonna, the cutest little thing. show Julian my cookie. So, here are my cookies that we just made. And that is pretty much all my techniques. This is what I have for you guys. I'm hoping I'm not forgetting anything, but that is, that's pretty much it. Mommy, why didn't they get shot? Oh, what about this cookie? This cookie didn't get shot. Ah, we need to see Tommy's techniques too. Hold on. Mommy, I don't know what to say. Oh, okay. So these are Tommy's cookies, Tommy's techniques. He did an amazing job. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna look, them, look at them on the phone. Whoa, like they look good, huh? Yeah. Mm. If you go farther up here, you'll get to see my my this one. Oh, that one? Yeah. Is that a chocolate one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna call that a chalk. That I'm gonna name that one. I'm gonna call it chocolate candy cane. Oh my goodness, you did a great job. I love it. I think you did really good at me. So it's about six hours later, and everything is like completely. Mommy, is there See, hard as a rock. Is See that with my nail? Mommy, is there any Not more even. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. This one meant a lot to me. I'm hoping that they shared something with you that you can take away from this, and I'm excited to see more people make cookies like this using these methods. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're new here, I make videos that are like this, cooking tutorials, as well as extreme grocery budget challenges, budget meals, and I do grocery hauls. So feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I am doing Vlogmas, so I'm gonna have videos every single day all December long. For more Christmas fun, here's my Vlogmas playlist, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.